everyone. We are learning Megillas Esther. We are up to the dramatic turning point in the narrative, which is Perek Vav. Perek Vav is the second day of Pesach, the three-day fast, Yud Gimel, Yud Dalit, Tesvav. Tesvav was the day that Esther Hamalka went to Achashverosh and had a Mishta. At the first Mishta, she invited them to the second Mishta. Haman is happy, but he's so angry at Mordechai, not responding. So Haman set up a gallows, and the next morning he's going to ask Achashverosh to hang Haman. But something happened that night. This is the night of Tessayan, the night, the second night of Pesach. Balai lohahu, and the Balkore reads this loud because this is the turning point. This is where Haman will now begin to have his downfall. That night, Nadada Shinas Hamelech, the sleep of the king was disturbed. The king could not sleep. Pashit Pshat is Achashverosh couldn't sleep because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants him to read about Mordechai and reward Mordechai. The Medrash says, however, that Melech also refers to Melech Malchay Amlochim. Hashem's name is not mentioned by Ferish, but the word Melech is Maramis to Hashem. And when we say God cannot sleep, it doesn't mean literally, but it's a reference to the Pasuk and to Hillim. Hine, lo yonum v'lo yishan, Shomer Yisrael. The guardian of Am Yisrael doesn't sleep. The king cannot sleep. But again, the Pasuk Peshat is Achashverosh, and the, that's why the rest of the Pasuk is referring to Achashverosh. Vayomer. And the king says, listen, I want my servants to read me some stuff. Lohavi as sefer has Let's read the chronicles, right? There was like a running record of different events that happened to the king, kind of the king's history, the king's biography, uh, even the nation's biography. Read to me from the book of memories. Divrei Hayomim, the histories. Vayunik Ram Melech, and they should be read before me. Vayimotzei Pasuk Beis. Vayimotzei Kasuv. Now again, this is also a miracle. They opened up the pages, and by miracle, this is the page they got, and whenever they tried to change the page, it always went back. <laughs> so the king finally said, read what you're reading. Read it. Because they... They, they, the servants tried not to read it. It was found written in the Sefer HaZichronos Divrei HaYamim Asher Higid Mordechai al Bixan of Viseresh The story of Mordechai and Bixan of Viseresh occurred after Esther was chosen as queen. That was in the seventh year. Seventh year, not the third year. I stand corrected. So now we're in the 12th year. This goes back to the 7th year. So it was five years before. That Mordechai had overheard the assassination plot of Bix and Viserech, who were hung. And it was recorded that Mordechai deserves reward for saving the life of the king. And Esther had told Achishverosh in the name of Mordechai. So it's written, Mordechai informed on Bixan of Viseresh, the two servants of the king, Mishomre Hasaf, the guardians of the door, the entrance, the lintel, meaning they determined who could see the king. Asher Bikshul, Shloach Yad, Malach Achashverosh, that they wanted to set their hand against Achashverosh. So Achashverosh overhears this great thing that Mordechai did for him five years ago. So the Melech asks his servants, what is recorded that we gave him as a reward? 
What greatness, what honor did Mordechai get because of this? Because something should be recorded. He got money, or he got a prize, or he got a vacation. So the young servants of the king said, as far as we know, he was never rewarded. Lo nasa imai davar. Nothing was done for him. Hmm. So now the king is cogitating. Hmm. I can't sleep, but I owe Mordechai a favor. In the meantime, there's a nighttime visitor. Haman was supposed to wait until the morning to ask Achashverosh to hang Mordechai. But Haman is so impatient, he's coming after midnight. Because after midnight, maybe it's close enough to the day, he can't contain his excitement. Which is interesting. Uh, apparently, Haman had access to the king at all times. Who's in the courtyard out there? Somebody seems to want to see me. Haman is now in the outer courtyard, hoping to get in. In order to ask the king to hang Mordechai. On the pole of 50 Amais, Asher Hechenlai. And Haman is waiting. So Achashverosh asks, who's there? The Pesach Hay says, Vayimru nari amelech elav, Hinei Haman, it is Haman omei b'chatser, Vayavai, Vayimru amelech yavai, Let him come in. And now very dramatically, the way, the way Abel Kori reads it, Vayavai, Haman, because this is Haman's downfall. Haman doesn't know it yet. Haman comes in. And Achashverosh poses to Haman a hypothetical question which is really about Mordechai, but he doesn't tell Haman that it's about Mordechai. If there is a man that the king wants to honor. What should be done for a man that the king wants to honor? What's the best way to honor him? You're my advisor. Give me advice. Achashverosh is thinking of Mordechai. Haman doesn't think of that. Haman thinks it's about himself. <laughs> and he says, Vayomer Haman Belibai. Haman says to himself, Hmm, what shall be done to the man that the king wants to honor? To whom would the king want to do kavod more than me? So I'm going to be modest. I'm not going to say you mean me, but I'll talk about what should be given to such a person. And I am confident that Achashverosh is going to honor me that way. So, Haman says to the Melech, Ah, I'll answer your question, Bidiuk. Ish, Asher, Hamelech, Chafetz, Bikaro. The man that the king desires, Yakar, Yakar is Kavod, in his honor. So this is what you should do. Yavio, Levush, Malchus, Asher, Lavash, by Hamelech. Bring royal garments, royal robes that the king himself has worn, not just things that look like the big day Melech, but the actual big godim of the Melech. Vesus asher rachav alav Melech, And put the man on the horse that the king himself rides, the royal horse. Vyasher nitan keser malchus barosho. And put the crown of the king. Again, Haman is being a little egomaniacal. He basically says, give me the robes of the king, the horse of the king, the crown of the king. Now, and then, going further, the robes and the horse should be entrusted al yad ish misare hamelech. In other words, an important official should be the one that dresses the man and leads the man. Because that's also going to be a covenant. Ha-partimim. Partimim is a Persian word for the nobility. 
The Hilbisho Eso Ish, they should dress the man with the royal robes. Asher Amel Chafes Bikar that the king wants to honor, Vir Kivuhu Alasus, Vir Chofair, and they should put him on the horse in the middle of the city. The Karul Afanaf, these Choshev people who themselves are nobility, should proclaim out loud, Kacha, and again, this would be in Persian, Kacha Yeyaseh Ha'ishi Amel Chafes, so shall be done to the man that the king wants to honor. So Haman is hatching this grandiose description, confident in Batuach, that it's about him. So now, the fate, the, 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 the wheel turns. Pasuk Yud, Vayemre Melech Lohaman, Maher, hurry up! Kachas olavush v'sasus, get the royal garments and get the horse, Kasher di Barte, exactly as you said. Exactly as you said. So Haman still has hope. Vyase Cain, le Mordechai Yehudi. And do all of this honor to Mordechai, the Jew. Achashverish knows Mordechai is a Jew. Hayeshe Bishara Melech, who is sitting next to the king's gate in sackcloth. Al tapel davar. Do not skip a single thing. Let fall. Do not let fall a single thing. Mikhail Asher Dibarta from anything that you said. Wow. Now it doesn't even describe Haman's emotions. One can only imagine that not only is he not getting the honor, but he has to give this cover to Mordechai. He takes the royal robes and the horse. He dresses Mordechai. And he rides him. He, he puts him uh, on top of the horse in the middle of the city. And he has to proclaim, This is the 16th of Nisan. So shall be done to the man. And again, according to Chazal, this is a remiss to Hashem. Mordechai is the man that the Abishter wants to honor. So there was a procession. After the procession, Mordechai went back to be as close to the king's gate as he was allowed, and Chazal say he went back to fasting. Even though this is already the fourth day, this is already Tess Zion, this is the next morning, Mordechai was still in a matzav of Tainus. For Haman. Now again, keep in mind, it's very important to keep in mind, Haman still has his gezerah. Haman still has a letter that's been circulated that the Jews are going to be destroyed on the 13th of Adar. So Haman has this Gezerah, and Haman didn't lose his job either. But Haman has been humiliated, embarrassed. Haman nitchaf el Haman was pushed to his house, meaning he was embarrassed to even go home. Avel, he was in a state of mourning. V'chafoy reish. And his head was covered in shame. Now the Gemara gives a bit of a story here that one of Haman's daughters sees a man wearing royal robes and the crown and being led on a horse and another man leading them and proclaiming. She figured, knowing that her father was going to get Mordechai hung, that Mordechai was leading on his way to the gallows, and Haman is on the horse. So she poured out the chamber pot filled with human excrement on the head of the guy leading the horse, thinking it was Mordechai. And Haman looked up, and his daughter saw it was her father. She fell out of the window, intentionally apparently, and committed suicide. And that is the idea of Avel. Haman was mourning Avelus. V'chafli Rosh, his head was covered with the garbage and the excrement. Haman goes home. It doesn't make a point of the daughter beyond this Pasuk. But V'yasapar Haman l'zeres ishta yuchalo avavishkolasher karo. If yesterday he talked about how honored he was, now he discussed 
how disgraced he was. And here, all of a sudden, these fair-weather friends who were building him up, they move in a different direction. So they're no longer called Ohavav because uh, these are fair-weather friends. They no longer love him so much because they see his star is falling. So instead of Ohavav, they're Chachamav, they're smart. As well as Zeresh, and they say, Ah, Im, Mordechai. If Mordechai is from the Jewish people, Asher If you have begun to fall under him, you're not going to win. Now, this is kind of disingenuous. They know Mordechai is Jewish. It's not a secret. Achashverosh, who's clueless generally, knows that Mordechai is Jewish. So yesterday they said, go ahead and hang him. Now they're saying, oh, 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 if he's Jewish, you're going to lose. Well, what did they think yesterday? Right? So the answer is, this is how they respond. When Haman is Matzliach, they say, go ahead, do it. Now they want to jump ship. Now they want to make themselves look good. They, oh, the Jew is going to defeat you, but you know we, we are not anti-Semitic, etc. We understand that. So part of it is the way a person jumps ship when the tide turns. They're friendly, even Zeresh. Friendly and supportive when the person is Matzliach. But when the person has bad fortune, they turn away from him. Also, Another way of learning it is that as long as the Jews were in a state of shiftless, so that's what happens sometimes. You have a shlita over them. But once we see Mordechai's menatzeach, Hashem is dealing with Am Yisrael in a different way. That's the Lushen. You're beginning your fall, meaning Mordechai is being lifted over you. At this point, you're in trouble. So, Haman has suffered undoubtedly what is the most humiliating moments of his life. <laughs> but this is the almost the humor of Megillah Sester. But now he better clean up, take a shower, because it's time for banquet number two, which he thinks is a kavod. Second day of Pesach, sixteenth of Nisan, sixteenth of Nisan. This whole thing is four days. Yud Gimel was the Gezeira. And the first day of Titus, you'd be, uh, I'm sorry, you'd gimel, you'd talit, tesvav. Esther went to the king. Tesayan in the morning. Mordechai is being paraded. And Haman gets uh, dunked with all of, the, uh, all of the dirt and the filth and the waste. And now it's time for the second banquet. Oidam mitabrem imai. His family is giving him the very, very sober warning that once the Jews are matzliach, you'll never win. The servants of the king come, and they're rushing to bring Haman to the banquet of Esther. And this will be the final downfall of Haman on the second day of Pesach, Tesai and Nisan. Again, it's very, very striking that so much of the Purim story is connected to the Geula of Pesach. <laughs>